Hi everybody. I hope this finds everybody healthy and well and still doing some creating. Um, so today we're going to talk about metering for light. And before I delve into metering modes, I want to just talk for two seconds about how a camera determines what your exposure should be. So inside your camera, the, the computer in there takes all of the brightnesses of the pixels that it's using to determine your exposure and it gets rid of all the color information. It just uses the brightness, the luminosity. And they have determined that, uh, they being the, the camera industry, have determined that a proper exposure is basically going to work out to be about 18% of reflected light which would be like a middle gray. And if your pixels in your photo that you're taking actually average out to that, then your camera does a perfect job of giving you that perfect exposure. Where your camera gets tricked is that it has no idea, first of all, what your subject actually is. It doesn't know. So it, it just, that, that you're gonna have to tell it sometimes. And other times, um, if your subject and the background information are going to pre present a lot of pixels that are not going to equal out to be 18% gray, you're going to need to make an adjustment, which is exposure compensation. I'll talk about that elsewhere. We're not going to really delve into that too much right now. But I want to talk about metering modes. All right, so a metering mode, the most popular one, and the one that your camera probably came out of the box being set to, is a multi-mode. And basically the multi-mode, it's sometimes, it depends, they're all different by camera company, but usually it's kind of like a honeycomb shape design around the whole frame of the image. And it does a whole big average calculation and comes up with your proper exposure value by metering for that. Some camera systems actually include your focus point in there, like where you've hit focus and maybe weight that a little bit more importantly. Others don't. They keep all of that proprietary and generally pretty secret. So you don't really know what a multi-mode is doing. Um, but as a general rule, given the, the sophistication and the quality of, of modern 2020 camera bodies or 2019 or 18 or 17, if you have a, a few years old, your multi-mode is probably the most reliable if you just want to set it on one and leave it there. So there are a couple of throwback modes, like a center weighted mode or like partial modes or whatnot, that are, are kind of vintage modes from kind of the era before light meters inside of cameras became much more sophisticated. And I'm not really even going to delve into those too much, but I am going to talk about a couple of others that I do use. One of them that I use a lot is spot metering. And I think it's probably fairly obvious from the name, but spot metering, instead of doing the entire frame, it's going to do a set spot. And that spot, basically, I use it a lot for faces. So if you meter to somebody's face, then the background can, can be either too bright or too dark. The example that I'm thinking of is actually at a beach. If you're taking a photo of a beach portrait and the person is out there and it's really bright sun behind them and, and everything is really bright, it could end up that their face is actually far too dark. And so if you want to expose for that face, if you put a spot meter right on their face, you'll generally brighten up the exposure for their face. Uh, now it might cause blowing out of highlights on the background stuff. So there's a compromise there. But I do definitely use spot metering quite a bit of the time when I'm trying to get somebody's face exposed. Now another metering mode that I also love is the, there's a mode that basically just prevents your highlights from blowing out. And that is very valuable because if as long as your highlights aren't blown out, you can pretty much adjust in post-processing whatever else you would need to adjust. Those three modes, multi, spot, and highlight are the three modes that I would recommend that you dabble with and, and experiment with. The other topic that I wanna talk about today is the Sunny 16 rule. So for the folks that have attended my classes at Cardinal Camera, I always talk about this because uh, once upon a time, 
film photographers lived and died by this rule. We didn't have the sophisticated meters built into our cameras. And so if you went in an outside bright sunny day, if you set your camera at F16, as long as your ISO and your shutter speed matched, you got a good exposure. So you could do ISO 100 and uh, 1 100th one of a second and you'd get a photo. If you needed a shutter speed to go faster, you could go 1 400th of a second and then just use ISO 400 and it will all work out. So that Sunny 16 rule, I would highly recommend if you want to just get away from all of the technical stuff and just go outside and do a, a, a little of experimenting, set it on F16 and just match your ISO and shutter speed on a bright sunny day and check it out. It's gonna work pretty well. Um, if it ends up being too dark, then you can actually, instead of F16, you could maybe go to F11. Um, if, if it's still too dark, if it's a cloudy day or there's less light or whatnot, go down to F8 and you'll eventually find the spot where matching your ISO and your shutter speed will make it work. All right, that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay healthy, stay well. Please subscribe and like and share out the videos. Thanks a lot.